Good morning, welcome to actual process control content. Yeah, today's actual process control content uh, because people ask me about this all the time. Could be all sorts of process control, BMS as well, same kind of thing, but with different things. But yeah, uh, it's going to be very process control day today, and I'll tell you why. The reason it's actual process control day is because uh, Frenchy, the water sparky, uh, has gone to work for Vega and he let me know that the Vega bus has come in. It's not the it's not the Venga bus, although I'm sure they'll hear that joke a lot today. Or they've heard it all week. But it's the Vega bus. Vega make probes, uh, not probes. Yeah, they do make probes. Well, I, I know what they made ten years ago. Vega make process control, many measuring, monitoring equipment. They are particularly good at monitoring flow, flow of things. I think they might just be flow of liquids. I'm not sure. And also pressure and level. They do level. They do loads of level. I think. So I think they do flow, level. Yeah, we'll find out today, but I, I don't want to quote on what they used to do, but they definitely do levels. And that's a that's a fucking three or four hour Instagram video on its own just talking about level probes. First things first, loads and loads of people must be going, oh, what books should I read to do process control or PLCs and all that kind of stuff, or what can I watch, yeah? My number one resource for you, if you are getting started, would be to go to this YouTube channel called Real Pars. They've got loads of stuff. It's not as obviously comedy fucking centric as me. I'm loads funnier, but it's just very serious. Um, it tells you how everything works. It explains it. And they've got hundreds of videos. You've got to have a sift through though and just find out where the base level ones are and start working through them. That is a great resource. You can learn all about analog values and digital values and PLCs and communications protocols and fucking everything on there. Because if I, like I say, if I start explaining process control to you, this video would last all day whilst I imparted what I know onto you and I don't know that much. I don't think French is I think he's a bit of a flow master. I think in the world of process control, he deals with lots of flow. And then to make it more niche, that he just, he can deal with everything, don't get me wrong, but he deals with flow. Flow of liquid, yeah? This flow of powder as well. And honestly, these can be whole careers. You can spend your entire career dealing with the flow of powder or the flow of water. In process control, which is a massive area, I've dealt a lot with packaging, palletizing, blending, which is mixing things together, and I've also dealt with a lot of levels, because obviously when you mix it together, you have it in silos, so you have a lot of level probes. And believe me, back in the early 2000s when I learned what I was doing at a cement factory, yeah, level probes weren't as good as they are now. They were new and modern, and we had all sorts of fucking mad shit the size of dustbins that would pretend to tell us how, how, how high or low a silo level was. But yeah, honestly, when you get into process control, there's so much going off, like pressure. There's pressure. But there's different types of pressure. What about vacuum pressure? That only goes to negative one bar. That's the maximum vacuum you can get. But in pressure-wise, you can go up to whatever you want, like till you start crushing things. Um, then it might be the pressure of air, or the pressure of a gas, or the pressure of a liquid. It might be the pressure being exerted by a product in a silo at the bottom so you can measure that value and work out how full it is. Honestly, it's, it's fucking insane. Like dealing with, if you've pumped water around in a flow process or a water-like liquid round, you have zero experience when it comes to moving around oil because that requires different ways of doing things because it's more viscous. Or maybe it's not, maybe it's thin oil, I don't know. But when you're dealing with processes, whether that be mixing up cement or mixing up fucking cake mix, things get fucking hairy quickly. And it's literally down to the product. Like for example, start moving sand around on a conveyor belt system. It's main quality is it'll wear everything out really fast because it's sand. Start moving flour around on a conveyor belt system. It won't wear it out because it's flour. However, it will fucking explode because it's explosive when it's turned into dust. So when you're dealing with things that may seem fine, like sand or flour, there are these little side hustles that make them either incredibly expensive to work or incredibly dangerous, and that's process control, knowing what you're processing, knowing what the controls are you doing with it, and trying to do it. Anyhow, that's the briefest of overviews. Um, Vega, who make the proby things that I'm going to show you today, I'm not going to talk too much about because they're going to show me, I'm going to show you. I think they've, um, they've re-released their range so that everything's programmable from a phone or a computer via Bluetooth, I think is the crack, so that you're not fucking around with little buttons and little shitty displays. They've got like 
full HMRs. I think that's their bag now. They're not the cheapest, don't get me wrong, but I think they've uh, made their range easier to use. And they probably put fucking, because they've got a better screen, they probably put tons of features in. Because like I say, moving things around or measuring things is hard. Um, you might want to say measure sand that ain't got a load of really fine sand in. I don't know, you'll get used to it today. But um, yeah, that's a very, very brief overview of process control. Real pars is where you want to go to. And um, yeah, this happens every day, whether it's in a bakery, big bakery making bread, now they'll have to do process control. A cement factory making cement, they'll have people do process control. Power stations, they all have it, so it's there, it's a, it's a job, basically. <laughs> I'm going to have to explain, yeah, that song is a song by the Venga Boys called The Venga Bus Has Come In, but that's the Vega Bus. That's the joke. Uh, I've not used a real song. One, it's just as bad. And two, unless you're 35 to 45, you wonder what the fuck it is, I'm assuming, but sort of put that in there in case you're wondering, what the fuck has he picked that music for, yeah? When I'm editing videos, it's boring. So I edit them and I amuse myself. The fact that you're amused is a byproduct of me being amused. Oh yeah, 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 sorry, I forgot. I've used that version because the real version's copyrighted, yeah? So if I put that in, I won't make any money out of this video. I won't get the £41 that I might make in a month for putting out these videos. So um, I want that money. And it's not that I need the money. It's just that I want it more than the Venga boys. And if I use their version, they'll still let my video go out. But the Venga boys, his music manager, will get the money. Well, he ain't having it, because he inflicted the Venga boys on us. So I'm having it. So this one's set up as you go in. It's just a simple pressure sensor that they are making relate to a gauge on the screen as a percentage. So I don't know what the percentages are. I think you can do like a strongman competition on it. But there you see, that little disc is pitching up the pressure. Obviously, in this style, it's just used as a game, but... We'll see later, that disc that measures pressure can be used for all sorts of things, as I'm sure we'll come across in the rest of the bus. This is the next one to come across. Now, what you see is you've got big solids and little solids in there. So this probe is for big solids. When you plonk it in with the big solids, which are indicated by these like glass marble type things, as soon as it comes in contact with them, it detects there is something there and goes red, sends a signal out to whatever control system you've got. This one is for your fine solid. So as soon as you dip it into some fine solid, indicate well, these little polystyrene balls, it detects there, there, and goes red. Great, you're saying, but what's the point of the exercise? Well, they're not interchangeable. So look, you stick that in there and it detects them, no problem, but oh no, it's got stuck in the fork, so it's going to detect it forever. Just a way of Vegas showing that you need to pick the right probe for the job, because that is going to say it's full forever and ever. And likewise, this one, the coarse one, it just shakes and vibrates in the fine powders and doesn't pick them up at all. So it's very important that you get the right selection. Vega will do all that stuff for you, so just go to them. Don't try and be a hero and work it out for yourself. This probe's quite clever because what it can do is it can snub. So as you see, it's looking down a tank with its invisible force field, but it's looking through those propellers into that liquid. So it can disregard the propellers moving in front of it whilst measuring the liquid. In the trade, we generally call that snubbing. And then there, look next to it, you've got a fork for the ultimate level. So that if any problems occur, as the tank's filling up, it, it's the ultimate level, which is that fork probe. So little bits and bobs going off there that are a bit different. I'm not going to get into the technicals on this one, whether this was ultrasonic or what, but it's got a send and a receive probe. And you'll see there, look, they can see each other, hence it's green. When I put my hand in front, it goes red because it can't see each other. Simple. This sensor like I've been around for years, but this one's got a bit more funkiness. So it can see through pipes. So as you can see now, like it can't see each other. But when I put the pipe there, it can look down the pipe and go green, which is extremely useful in the process industry. So it's seen around the bend in the confines of the pipe. Then also, it can look through other things. It can see through other materials. So in this case, it can see through glass and plastic. So if I put this piece of glass here, look, it can still see its friend through that. But if I put my hand in the way of the glass, it blocks it off. Particularly useful, say you're designing, you don't want to put a probe in, but you could put some glass windows in it. You could look at products through the glass. You might get hold upon the glass and stuff, but it's it's options. It gives you options. If it's liquid, that's me fine. You can have a glass window. Don't want to use glass because you're food. Well, they've got some funky plastics you can use, the MDEPs and all that. It sees straight through that. So you could have a plastic side and you can look through it. So really, really useful in the food industry. 
again, I'm not getting mad technical on here, but this is a very, this is one of their cheaper range of probes. Very simple, it's got Bluetooth and all that. You can see it being used there, look to look down at that water, and it can offer flow and level in an extremely cheap package. It's to compete basically with floats. We'd have a start float and a stop float, and they would be shy and get twisted up with each other. So Vega do a simple probe for that, which is something I'm looking at actually. <laughs> This is another one from the cheaper range. It's measuring flow. I don't know how. It sees the water below it. Goes through that channel so it gets faster. But it's non-contact flow measurement, which I do not understand. <laughs> I don't get why it does it. Please, someone explain to me. I need to speak to uh, my man on that one. See what goes off. But yeah, that's a decent thing. You don't have to have something in the water to get that previously. They do all sorts of normal probes and mad probes. This one, though, it's got a very narrow beam. So, look, it can see down that silo through those holes, those baffles just there to show you. you normally, baffles like that, but the beam is so narrow, it can look a long way down a, a, a vessel. So, it could be a borehole pump or a well or something like that. So, that's really, really useful for looking down pipes, see if they're blocked or where blockage occurs, that kind of thing. These probes have loads of different uses. There's a lower unit there, a nice hard and lower unit, so you can have the probe at the top of that tank, as shown there. Cable down to the outside, so you get a visible representation at the bottom of the silo of what is going off. Quite a nice little feature. Could have done with that when I worked in the cement industry, to be honest, because we always need to do that, and the bottom units were, were crap and got broke. This little fella is radioactive, so there's some radiation stuff in there, yeah, that it can fire through and that can receive it. This is basically what you have to use when no other fluid measurements will be used. So again there, there's radiation being fired through that vessel and being picked up by that black snake there that looks a bit like a dong. This is when you can't damage a vessel or you're trying to retrofit to a vessel that you can't damage, that you can't mess around with, that you can't fuck around with. It's absolutely imperative in some industries that vessels stay as intact as they are. They can't be caught, drilled or welded, like an offshore and all that. So that is the sensor you use when absolutely nothing else can do the job. There you go, there's a bit on process control, I got you a bit interested. There are all the probes, there are lots of probes they do, they do all sorts, and what you do is basically, is you go to, that's Vega, there's other brands available, I'm not being paid by them like that. You go to them and you say, I wanna do this, I wanna measure this in this situation, and it's this product, and they'll advise you and all that kind of thing. Obviously then, the probes you've just seen give out a value, normally four to 20 milliamps, which is interpreted by a control system. If you want to know about 4 to 20 milliamps, I've got videos about it on YouTube and how it works. It's just a proportional thing called analogs, which gives you a zero point, which means it's broken. 4 milliamps, that means it's low. 20 milliamps, that means it's high. And everything in between is a percentage. So, yeah, I've got videos on that on YouTube. I'm not re explaining it here. But, yeah, this will probably be on YouTube, although you won't hear the Venga Boys song because... No doubt that'll get a copyright strike and put it on YouTube. But, yeah, I don't know what you've just listened to, music-wise, but... um. I hope that gives you a rough idea of what's going off. And those probes are for heavy industrial environments and that kind of thing. But RF vacuum cleaner just messed me and says like, you've got that in coffee machines. A coffee machine in a petrol station requires to know how high something is, like the, how high the beans are, how hot the liquid is, what pressure the liquid's at. So an oil refiner of this massive control system that tells it about pressures and volumes and levels and flows, but then a little coffee machine We'll have all that in as well, which is weird. But yeah, I operate more of the industrial space, but a lot of those sensors you've seen there are available in much smaller, cheaper versions for like Raspberry Pis and stuff. That they're not as they're not as good or as 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 constant on the measurements, but they do exist. So you don't have to be buying 20 gram probes in that. I think there's like little part Raspberry Pi sensor sets that do some of those things. Certainly you can get a five pound press transducer and play with it. So yeah, have a look. And uh those numbers, those analogue numbers that come back are the basis of all control.